And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. In Disaster Looms, you are trying to make money. <laughs> because you're making money, what's going to happen is the Earth is about to explode or die, or something's bad's happening, and so you're going to shuttle people off to habitable planets. And you'll do that at a profit, of course, and your goal is to be the most profitable. Disaster is coming, and you're going to profit off it. Quick disclaimer, I did a paid preview for this game when it was still in prototype form, and you can take that into consideration. Although I do not lie when I do my reviews, let's look at it. In Disaster Looms, each person starts with a spaceship on Earth. And you see Earth has assets of three. That means you will get $3 per turn that you will add into your treasury. Here you can see that you have other ships that you can build. There's different shape ships. And the reason they're on here is because when your ships are carrying population, and the Earth has a whole pile of population that's trying to get off, you will put them on the ships that they are being carried by. And at the beginning of the game, your ships have a carrying capacity of one. Now, what players are going to be doing on their turn, uh, there's several things. First, they have a possibility to do research, and I'll talk about that in a bit. And then they will have the opportunity to do actions with their ship. And the way that works is with these action cards here. There are different action cards here, and each of these costs money to do, or, well, pass is free, I suppose. The rules for the action cards are on the back of them. But it, most of the action cards are pretty simple. For example, you can move two space on the board, if there was two spaces to move to. But usually you're going to explore. And when you explore, you're going to pull from these tiles, A, B, and C, and put them in the place you say you're going to explore. So I say, okay, I'm going to go this direction. I draw a tile, and it's actually an event tile. So we resolve the event first. In this case, it's an infection. And then I put out whatever it was. Here's an asteroid field. Not very useful, but as the game goes by, you'll find other things. Maybe you'll find empty space, still not useful. Maybe you'll find a metal world. And when you find a world, if you're carrying a passenger, you can drop the passenger off along with one of your tokens, and that world is now yours. And it will add those assets to you, and you can also set up a trade route to get some extra money if it's close enough to Earth. And so that's what you can do. Those are the basic actions that you will be able to take. However, if players buy technology, technology will come out, and these will be set in front of you as you get them. And you can only have so many technology cards in front of you, so as the game progresses, any technology that you get rid of goes over here with these cards. It becomes in the public domain, and anybody has the opportunity to use those technologies. Sometimes those technologies are actions like a scanner sweep. Sometimes they're upgrades to your ship. For example, this mass containment, now your ships have plus one. Uh, capacity. And so there's lots of technologies. In fact, the game allows me to license your technology. I can pay you half of the cost of that technology and use your technology for that turn. And the technology deck has A, B, and C, and so you, the technologies will get better as time goes by to the point where you get tourism and hyperdrive and genetic engineering and terraforming different planets will give more profits. So there's that in the game. Also, you can hostily take over something, not by fighting, but by buying it out. If someone does not have a ship there, and you can bring your ship in, and you can drop someone off, and you pay them money for the people that they have there, and then you'll put one of your tokens on instead. And there's different colors of players included in the game. Yellow, black, and blue are the other colors that are in this game. And so you can take over someone by basically buying them out. This will continue for a while until one of something happens. Either all the population tokens are taken off Earth and have landed on planets where they will be safe, or someone draws the cataclysm tile and Earth explodes, and at that point the game is over. You will get points for all the planets that you have. You get points for some of your technologies. You will get points for your money that you've accumulated over the course of the game. By the way, you keep track of how much money you make per turn with this dial here. And you will get points for the number of people that you've managed to get off and on the planets that you control. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Disaster Looms is a very interesting game. There's a lot of things about it that I really like. I like the flying the ships out. I like how they have the ships priced. It's an interesting thing. It's mentioned on the card here that when you buy a ship, the cost of that ship, the next available ship, depends on how many ships you already have. So if you already have, if you're buying your first ship, it's always free in case for some reason it blows up or whatever. But your fourth ship is going to cost you 12 resources. So you start out with only a little bit of money, but you can get more. Technologies are critical in picking the right technologies as you draw them and play them and knowing 
someone to use someone else's is a big deal. And there's a lot of fun going around exploring, finding planets, dropping people off. And then after a while you just decide, am I going to leave a ship here on this planet just so no one takes it over? Or will I move away hoping no one comes in with the money and takes my planet over? Which can be really annoying and can give someone a lot of points at the end of the game. Not to mention, can lower the amount of money I'm getting per turn. So the technology idea is great. Being able to having technology is going to public domain is a good idea. Being able to use other people's technologies by paying them. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a sci-fi business game. And there's a lot of neat concepts in it. So I like it. But I'm very disappointed in this production. I'm very disappointed in the really, really poorly written rule book. One of the worst rule books. I mean, it, it will take you a long amount of time before you're like, there's no rules in the game. Oh, they put some rules on these cards that are absolutely critical to the game. It's on the card. They have this, look at this, the first page is blank. Uh, <laughs> It was just a lot. I mean, this game is really difficult to figure out. I mean, when I first got the rules in prototype form, they were actually better than these, I thought. And I gave them and said, you need to improve these a little bit. And, and they really didn't do that. And then the other problem with this game is it's really a shoddy production. Um, you know, I know that there's companies and, you know, but with Kickstarter, I mean, I think some of the money could have been better spent. The cards have... These, they're, they're poor quality cards. They have the pointed corners. They're gonna get beat up black. I mean, I barely am moving these cards and they're getting, the, the tiles, when I punched them out, they ripped on the sides of them. Um, the box and every, it just, uh, man. I, I mean, the game is good. I'll play the game. I will enjoy the game. But it is, could have been an absolutely fantastic game. It could have been a game I've been like super excited about. Wow, look at this great thing. Now I'm saying, look, please, ignore this. Ignore this. And I'm afraid that a lot of people are going to get this game and try to play it and be like, oh, we can't figure everything out. Yes, I know there's new rule sets. You can probably find them on the internet and find them. But that should not have been published this way. Even like this dial for the assets on, the, on this thing here, it doesn't fit together properly. And so it becomes like a spinner. Well, you don't want it to be a spinner. You want to keep track of how many assets you have. So uh, I'm just saddened by, by it because it could have been so great. As it is, though, I do not dislike the game. I think the gameplay is fine. I think there's a lot of cool things about the game. The technologies will come up in different orders each time. The planets and the way they explore will come up a little bit different. There's randomness, dealing with events, finding things, you know, and some people won't like that. And I can live with that because it should balance out over the course of the game. I like the aspect of flying around, finding planets. And if you find a better planet than me, that's fine. No problem. It's yours until you're not looking. Then I'm taking it. And that's what makes this game fun. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! That's right. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah.